Good afternoon, good evening, wherever we are in this world. Welcome to Ascendo Traders, and this is our weekend wrap-up trade plan for August 10th, 2008. AscendoTraders.com, effective video trade plans delivered daily. And our members know that each night we come together to, to provide uh, new trades for our members to get into. Um, we check our watch list. We look at um, set our stops and alerts. We check uh, economic news and splits and earnings, again, to see what potentially can affect um, some of our existing trades, but more importantly, what could be some new trades that we can look at based upon the news and the earnings. Um, on the weekends, we add looking at newsletters and blogs to see what some of the experts are saying about the market. We also want to look at the sectors to see which ones are trending up and down. Always check our indexes, scan for new trades. Again, that's the focus of our videos that we put together each night for our members. Set alerts, and as always, the most important thing that we believe is to have time to spend with your family. So let's start off this week. Obviously, the market ended up higher this week. Um, the stock market being the world's greatest roller coaster ride provided yet another thrilling ride. We had some ups and some downs. Uh, we had the dollar rallying this week. Um, what we saw was that the the easy play of being long the euro started to unwind. Um, there was some hopes by some traders that the Fed was going to actually start raising hikes, raising their rates, um, and so that would help the dollar. Um, but even though, as we know, on Tuesday the uh, FOMC uh, held the rate unchanged, um, the dollar still continued to move. Um, we also, as you can see, we had the financial sector that we're going to talk about in a little bit. About they continue to provide plenty of um, uh, news to move the market, and we know we need that financial sector to keep the S and P moving. And then we had the closely watched crude price plummet, and we'll talk about that in a second. So let's get to those corporate headlines. And you can see in our financial sector, we had Freddie Ma Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae post horrible earnings for, uh, this week. Um, Citigroup also uh, settled their allegations about misrepresentation some of the stock uh, vehicles that they were selling to clients. And what's going to be interesting to see about that is I believe there's 11, maybe 13 states that are bringing similar lawsuits against some of the brokerages about, again, misrepresenting these stock vehicles, these market vehicles that they were selling to their um, clients, the risks that was involved. Um, Cisco also posted um, a good, strong earnings report. But what was good about that, not about the Cisco, because Cisco was a tech stock, but what was good was that even though Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae posted these negative reports, um, the financial sector was so strong that we saw, uh, you know, some of that old bullish mentality of buying the dips. On our economic data front, we had personal income and spending have better than uh, expected numbers. Uh, but then we had price inflator was negative. Pending home sales was better than expected. But what I want to get to is we had the weekless, weekly initial jobless claims rise. And that's what really kind of set the market down on uh, Thursday. Um, it rose to uh, 455000 which rose the, uh, um, the four-week average to the highest that it's ever been since July 3rd. Uh, 2003. So um, well, there was definitely some concerns about the consumer with that. However, again, the uh, the market right now is buying the dips, and we'll see if that sentiment can continue this week. As we talk about, the oil has um, dipped this week, um, and one reason you have to think about it is that oil is based upon it's it's a dollar denominated uh, commodity price. So as the dollar was rising, the oil price fell. Um, crude fell this week 7.9% uh, um, to a final price on Friday of $115.20. And that is a total of 22% uh, that it's fallen since the highs of July. So this week, what do we have coming up? Nothing on Monday. We got trade balance. Crude inventory is obviously on uh, Wednesday. We also have retail sales that might have a little market moving there. And we have initial claims. Maybe initial claims, once again, can provide us something like it did last week that, to make the market fall. Um, and then uh, New York Empire and Michigan Cinema coming on Friday. Nothing really huge, but we definitely could see something. Um, we have some uh, inflation data here also. 
So tomorrow we have no uh, economic data uh, scheduled, nothing on the earnings front before market that's really big. We do have FLR and LDK after the market, Solar company there. This week we've got some retail stocks, Abercrombie and Fintz. Uh, J.C. Penney's. We also have Deer, Walmart, Autodesk. So we have some some uh, coming up this week, and then you can see our split plays that we've been watching up till now. So let's go ahead and take a look at our sectors. So as we begin to look at our sectors, this is going to be the first week in a while that we're going to have more bullish sectors than we have negative. And as we look at our negative, we have agriculture, uh, energy looks a little weak, uh, drilling. Uh, looks weak, metals looks weak, steel looks weak, gold looks weak, um, and the last one we have is utilities. But when you look at all of these, you kind of all could, could make a very good argument that they're basing, that they're bottoming, that they're finding good support. So although we, ha I have them in the bearish category, metals, steel, gold, agriculture, drilling, um, they also look like they could easily bounce from here. Now, on the bullish side, we're going to start off with a new entry to the mix, and that is consumers. Check out consumers. Looking very nice. Um, certainly a little consolidation here, but popping above the 50 like that. Um, also, we have banking. Same thing here. We are consolidating, but I think we may bounce here. So I'm, I, I am going to go ahead and put them in the bullish uh, category. And then we have brokers. Um, you know. If we can get above 2200 here, definitely uh, a bullish side to that. So one of our old friends is drugs, and still nice uptrend here. Again, we'd like to see it get above this resistance of those wicks. Biotech, the same thing here. like to see it get back up here above 5300. Uh, new to our bullish list is aerospace. Look at that. Very nice, breaking above the 50. Um, and it's, it's been a while, but we're bringing back casinos. Very nice. Um, also, we're going to bring in retail. Been a while for them also. Um, we have airlines, trucking, even railroads uh, have potential to be bullish. And it also been a while. We've got computer and hardware. We've got software. And finally, we have semiconductors. Okay, so now it's time for the education portion of our video. We're using the book Trading in a Zone uh, by Mark Douglas, and we're on Chapter 3, Taking Responsibility, Reacting to Loss. And the last time we met on our weekend wrap-up report, uh, we talked about taking responsibility means believing that all of your outcomes are self-generated. Um, and the moment that you stop taking responsibility and blame the market and say that the market is out to get me or or more importantly that you don't take responsibility that the fact that the trade didn't work out is just a, a function of you made a choice based upon what you see and it didn't work out is when you begin to set up two negative uh, barriers for your trading the first is that you make the market into your enemy you make the market into your adversary and the second is as you believe that well I can solve my problem by learning more market analysis, learning a new indicator, learning a new trading style. And so looking at that first one, when you project or give up uh, responsibility of your trading, you now make it look like the market is out to get you. You make it look like the market has an idea of what you're trying to do. And, uh, you know, we've said this time and time again through our videos, the market has no idea who you are. I hate to bust your bubble, crush your ego, whatever. The market knows not who you are. It doesn't know what your trading style is. It doesn't know why you place the trade. It doesn't know if you want it to go up or down. It doesn't care. It is just a stream of information that you yourself, based upon your trading plan, make decisions upon and that you yourself act upon. But the market is just, you know, it's just going along. It doesn't know who you are. It doesn't know what you expected to happen and doesn't really care. So the first obstacle uh, when you uh, don't take responsibility is, again, you, you project that out to the market, but the market does not know who you are. It just doesn't know. It doesn't care. Uh, that's why all we have to do is set up our rules, our cr criteria, our routines for trading, the 
which is just our trade plan in action. And we're taking out our emotions out of our trading. And we, the market is not our adversary. The market is our vehicle to getting out of the rat race. That's how I look at it. As always, thanks for watching. Um, to get the full version of our trade plan here, video trade plan, which is always around 30 minutes and um, gets our talks about all of our trades, you have to be watching the podcast versions. Um, if you're watching the YouTube, you got to get the podcast version. Um, if you're ready to step up and become a member of our video trade plan, there's a link there, signaltraders.com slash video.html. Again, our video trade plan is about providing new trades every day. Um, it's not about following a trade forever. It's about every day, here are some trades that we think are safe to enter. Um, as always, we appreciate our feedback. And check out our blog for our new articles. And we do put um, videos on our blog also at blog.ascendotraders.com. And as always, trade at your own risk. I'll see you guys next time.